Hello. We are broadcasted from in the basement at an undisclosed location. Life. It is full of joy, whimsy, hope, and beauty. Babies, ice cream, prayer, a good cry, rainbows, waterfalls, anime, friendship, food, drink, and family. These are the joys of the world. Your eyesight, hear it, touch, smell, taste, reasoning, youth, a long life. These are the blessings we take for granted. Life is wonderful for the most part. And then there is another side to life, an underbelly, an underbelly of the whale, the leviathan, the deep, dark depths, clouds under which there is waves on top of waves, under which is darkness. This layer of life is the part where nightmares live. Since life cannot just be positive, let us discuss the darkness. Imagine yourself as a farmer. After years of drought and dry conditions, you finally receive the divine help. More rain than the last two years combined. A bumper harvest ensues, barley and wheat bursting out forth. And farmers, after sinking everything covering the deficit of the last year's losses, are now flush with cash and back in the black, like Amy Winehouse. Mercy was visited upon you. Your hopes and dreams recover and you look forward to the future. But bubbling just outside your farmlands, within arm's reach of your crops, under the very ground that spawned those very crops. There is another that also dreams. Dreams a dream that will soon be your own very nightmare. They emerge like the cicadas that appear every score or so. Mice. Millions and millions of mice. Australia. After a number of dry years followed by good precipitation and short intensive agricultural seasons. A bumper crop. Wheat and barley have become like a feeding boom in the farmlands of Australia. These farmers were very particular in keeping down the predator numbers to protect their flocks and crops and so the vermin were left the wiggle room to wiggle out of wombs by the millions. They find their way into everything, crawling into beds and biting people. Open a cupboard, mice pour out. People patch up holes, crevices, and any flank that this enemy can lay siege upon them. Imagine a Trojan horse that not only passed the walls, but also lives in the walls, in the roof, and any space they can climb into. They march one by one, breaching the farmlands they were born and travel, covering an area of 1,000 square kilometers stretching from Adelaide to Brisbane, via Melbourne and Sydney. They attack hotels, bakeries, child care centers. Imagine a smell of a mouse, its furry musty odor, now amplify that by ten thousands. And wafting alongside that smell is the stench of ten thousand other dead mice. This is just another day in paradise. Still will to patch up holes and traps of all kinds are no match for this menace. It is not enough. This happened before the 80s, the 90s, and in 2011. But farmers now say this is the worst they have ever seen. What is the solution to the scourge? Bromodialone. It was said that using bromodialone would be the equivalent of napalm in mice. Bromodialone blocks the production of vitamin K. The vitamin is central for blood clotting and leads to the rodents bleeding out. Upon contact with the poison, the mice are okay, which allows them to come back and continue to consume ever more, making it very effective. 
The problem with bromodialone is that it doesn't break down after the mouse dies and can kill anything that consumes that carcass. Such is the plague that is upon Australia, they're even considering using this zinc phosphate. An alternative to it is thought to be the best option as it is much less likely to kill unintended wildlife. Zinc phosphate kills a mouse within an hour or less and its toxicity converts into a gas within a day neutralizing itself. Bromodialone takes 7 days roughly to kill and remains toxic for 100 to 200 days afterwards. Anything that eats these baits and poisonous mice that entire time will also die. The Australian government is rushing to pump this onto its farmlands and surrounding areas. May God help all the living creatures in that area, except of course the mice. They must go. The conditions for these mice were perfect, and bromodialone is a desperate move for a desperate population. There is another population that scurries underfoot, making people desperate all over again. When there is no threat of predation, these creatures rise and descend on our homeworld like the necromongers of Chronicles of Riddick. Karens. You see, Karens thrive when there is no resistance, like the cats brought by Europeans to Australia. They prey on the defenseless and feed their insatiable hunger. How do we make it stop, Cam Hemmons? Patience, my pupils. Everything in due time. To first defeat a menace, you must understand its nature. How did it come to be? And you'll soon see Karen is an aberration, a glitch in the matrix, an abomination. She shouldn't be. She is the result of a society in cinders. Daddy, can I have this? No, dear. I want it. Okay, dear. Give me this candy, Mama. Yes, dear. Give me, give me, give me my, 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 no, 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 I hate you. What is a parent to do, K.M. Hemmings? A paddling on the behind will be just fine. Karen doesn't like that, oh no. She was told by a nice lady in a blue uniform in grade 3. If your mommy and daddy make you owie, remember 911. And as daddy approaches Karen, if you hit me, I will call the police. Daddy, it's your move. Call her bluff. Tell her the police will be a while before they arrive. And until then, that behind is mine. Why are you putting the paddle away? Why are you moving away, Mama? No, Father. Don't let this child run you. They back down, and a Karen is born. Karen had her first taste of proxy power. An absolute power corrupts absolutely, and a boy in a similar situation will transform into a Ken. Ken and Karen. You're barbecuing? I don't like that. 911. Selling water? 911. Watching birds in a park? 911. Why? Just why, Karen? I love the power. Bad customer service? Who is the 911 of the store? Who is in charge? What proxy power can I utilize to bend the world like I bent my parents to my will? Karen, I see you. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. Why are you so afraid, Karen? Ken, why the anxiety? Why do you catastrophize any stimuli that is uncomfortable? Because a Karen is frail. She is not robust, not resilient. Why? Karen hasn't grown up since daddy and mommy put that paddle down. She froze at that age and is still a child in need of discipline. She is begging the world to put her in her place, to help her, to love her. How can we help her, Karen Hemmings? I am an optimist through and through, but Karens are dangerous creatures led astray by the bifurcation of authority. Now what I'm about to say, I say with great pain. Karen's father was never her father. Her real daddy was the authority who would imprison her parents for disciplining her with that paddle and strip them of their freedom and rob them of their child. At least, that is what they would have you believe. 
When it comes to your children, you must love them enough to put yourself in harm's way. For the fear of power is the wedge the state uses to rob us of our children and creating the very terrors and kins that we must now live amongst. We cannot save this generation of Karens. They will lean on Big Daddy and his tools to threaten you at the slightest provocation. Karens are children. Children that have a revolver, a danger to everyone including themselves. How do you survive an encounter with such a creature? Ignore them. Your attention is what they crave. Like vampires, they feed on your emotions. Use the Grey Rock method and save yourself. Ignore. Avoid. Be emotionless like a gray rock. You will be uninterested and this predator will move on to another target. Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day, Day everyone. everyone.